position that the wealthiest 1% of the population in this country owns more wealth than the bottom 90%. So if we're going to talk, I guess it's not interesting, Mr. Chairman. It is also because we apparently lack the funds to provide them a minimal standard of living. I fear very much that what we said yesterday is that war and the enormous destructive power of our armed forces is our preferred manner for dealing with the very complicated and terrible crises in the Middle East. I fear that someday we will regret that decision and that we are in fact laying the groundwork, groundwork for more and more wars in that region in years to come. Mr. Speaker, it is incumbent upon us to do everything in our power now that the war has started to prevent unnecessary bloodshed and to support our troops in the most basic way by bringing them home alive and well. Any shocking doubt? The same people that would vote to cut defense $177 billion, the same ones that would put homos in the military, the same ones that would not fund BRAC, the same Mr. ones Chair, that would not clear up. Mr. No, I will not. Sit down, you socialist. Mr. Chair. Then the gentleman from Vermont is right. Well, the gentleman what from purpose? California is Mr. Mayor. For what purpose does the gentleman from Vermont rise? Rise to speak in support of the amendment. The gentleman from Vermont. I wonder if I could question the gentleman. The gentleman, the gentleman, the chair is in charge, the chair is speaking. The gentleman from Vermont has been recognized for a period of five minutes, and you may now proceed. I thank the chairman very much. I'd like the opportunity if the gentleman from California would respond. Just ask him a brief question, if I might. Now, my ears may have played, been playing a trick on me, but I thought I heard the gentleman a moment ago say something, quote-unquote, about homos in the military. Was I right in hearing that expression? Absolutely. Putting homosexuals in the military. You said something about homos in the military. Was the gentleman referring to the many thousands and thousands of gay people who have put their lives on the line in countless wars defending this country? I'm was that the group of people that the gentleman was referring to? I'm talking about the military people in the military do not support... That's not what you're bill. talking about. You use the word homos in the military. You have insulted thousands of men and women who have put their lives I'm talking on the line. about I you. Think, sometimes I think that the people in this institution and in the White House are really losing contact and not knowing what's going on with the American people. In case you don't know, and you haven't seen the latest polls, the American people hold the President of the United States in contempt. They hold this institution in contempt. They hold the Republican Party in contempt. They hold the Democratic Party in contempt. They think that maybe, given all of the crises facing this country, it's about time that there was some bold leadership here, $170 billion a year on the military, but we don't have a major enemy. I know it hurts your feelings. I know you're upset about it. I know you're hoping and praying that maybe we'll have another war. Maybe somebody will rise up. But it ain't happening. The Soviet Union doesn't exist. The Warsaw Pact is through. Who are you worried about? Iraq? Panama? Who are you worried about? I'll tell you who I'm worried about. I'm worried about the fact that our workers are seeing a decline in their standard of living. They want to see our industry be rebuilt. That's what they want to see. No more B-2 bombers. No more Star Wars. Let's make the quality products we need. Let's invest in American industry. The Amer no, I won't yield. The American people want to see our kids educated. They want a Head Start program. They want their kids to be able to go to college. They want to wipe out the fact that 5 million children in this country go to bed hungry. They want child care for their kids. They want decent education. Let's have the guts to give some leadership to this country. The Cold War's over. Let's reinvest in America. Let's support this amendment. Thank you for yielding, and I want to congratulate you on the excellent work that you're doing on this fight. Mr. Chairman, I rise in opposition to Kyle Allen amendments, to the Barton Towson amendments, to the Gephardt Banyer amendment, to the Stenholm Smith amendment, and to any other fraudulent so-called congressional 
balanced budget amendment, which is just another gimmick in our effort to deal with a very serious problem. Mr. Chairman, in the early 1980s, the Reagan-Bush team, corporate America, and some congressional Democrats came together to give us Reaganomics and the trickle-down theory. It was a fraud. The result of that effort is that the rich became richer, the working people and the poor people became poorer. That's what trickle-down theory was about. That was the early 1980s. Mr. Chairman, a few years later, and I urge you, and I mean this seriously, because you're an honest person. I think you just don't know what's going on in the real world. And I would urge you, come with me to Vermont, meet real people. The country clubs and the cocktail parties are not real America. The millionaires and billionaires are the exception to the rule. You talk about an improving economy while we have lost 3 million private sector jobs in the last two years. Long-term unemployment has more than tripled. Unemployment is higher than it has been since 1994. We have a $4 trillion national debt. 1.4 million Americans have lost their health insurance. Millions of seniors can't afford prescription drugs. Middle-class families can't send their kids to college because they don't have the money to do that. Bankruptcy, bankruptcy cases have increased by a record-breaking 23%. Business investment is at its lowest level in more than 50 years. CEOs make more than 500 times of what their workers make. The middle class is shrinking. We have the greatest gap between the rich and the poor of any industrialized nation. And this is an economy that is improving. I hate to see what would happen if our economy was sinking. Now today, you may not have known this. I suspect that you don't, but you have insulted tens of millions of American workers. You have defended over the years, among other things, the abolition of the minimum wage, one of your policies, and giving huge tax breaks to billionaires. But today you reached a new low, I think, by suggesting that manufacturing in America doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where the product is produced. We lost two million manufacturing jobs in the last two years alone, 10% of our workforce. Walmart has replaced General Motors as the major employer in America, paying people starvation wages rather than living wages, and all of that does not matter to you. Doesn't matter if it's produced in China, where workers are making 30 cents an hour, or produced in Vermont, where workers can make 20 bucks an hour. It doesn't matter. You have told the American people that you support a trade policy which is selling them out, only working for the CEOs who can take our plants to China, Mexico, and India. You insulted Mr. Castle. Mr. Castle, a few moments ago, a good Republican, told you that we're seeing not only the decline of manufacturing jobs, but white-collar information technology jobs. Forrester Research says that over the next 15 years, 3.3 million U.S. service industry jobs and 136 billion in wages will move offshore to India, Russia, China, and the Philippines. Does any of this matter, matter to you? Do you give one whit of concern to the middle class and working families of this country? That's my question. All right, this shout out is going to Salvador Garcia and his awesome girlfriend. Thank you guys. And to his homies, Brandon and Nate from the Mendenhall Experiment, a kick-ass band out in California, which is exactly where we need this video to get shared and everybody in California to step up and vote for Bernie Sanders. The guy is fucking awesome. He's totally got our backs. So let's get his back, you guys.